Welcome all. Thank you so much for joining. Um, my name is Lawrence, and I'm here together with Carol to give you a presentation on building an end-to-end -end lightweight M2M application. Um, so I see that there are some people already joining in, uh, but let's wait for a minute or two before we are actually going to start. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to drop a message in the chat um, saying who you are and where you're from. Um, and in the meantime, we can do a short introduction as well. So, uh, Carol, you want to start? Yes, of course. Uh, so, hello. Uh, my name is Carol. I work at AB System as a, a programmer in Embedded Team, uh, where I'm mainly involved in developing our library Anjai, uh, which is a client side implementation of lightweight machine to machine protocol. Uh, and also, I, I'm developing uh, various integration with uh, different, different platforms and SDKs. Uh, one of these uh, is uh, integration with ASP32, uh, which is the basis for today's demo. Perfect. Well, great to have you joining in. Um, and um, uh, we have actually something pretty cool to demonstrate. Um, I have it here with me as well. Mine looks um, not as professional as Carol, but I don't know this is what I kind of made myself. It's just a CO2 sensor with some temperature humidity sensor hooked up to an ESP32. Um, but in a second, you will, or later on in this presentation, ah, oh, you already have it with you. Yes, Perfect. there is one uh, with PCB board, so. So that's actually the, the more beautiful version. All right, so my name is Lawrence. I'm uh, responsible for developer relations within AV System. Um, meaning that I'll be responsible for the documentation for hosting webinars like this. Um, and I know kind of try to introduce um, both the lightweight and the web protocol to IoT developers as um, the products that we offer from AV system. Um, nice. Good. Welcome, Stefan from Switzerland. Amir, good to see you again. Uh, Kaushik, all the way from Canada. All right, it's great to have everyone here. Um, okay, so uh, I think we're ready to, um, to start off the presentation. Um, so I'll start off with a brief introduction to the subject. Um, and I don't know I'm trying to keep it short because you're all here to hear Carol's demo, which is way more interesting. So uh, I'll try to keep it within, let's say, 10 minutes or so, uh, after which Carol will take over. And we're trying to finish everything within 30 minutes, and then maybe we have another 5 to 10 minutes of questions, depending on um, uh, how many questions are um, here from the audience. Hey, JP Myers, good to have you here as well, all the way from Cape Town. OK, so building an end-to-end -end lightweight M2M application. Um, but before I start, I actually have a cool announcement to make, which is that we just released uh, the Lightweight Machine to Machine Academy, uh, which is an online course and is just published on Udemy. It's free for everyone. Um, it contains five different modules and it really goes into um, all the basics around the Lightweight M2M standards. So feel free to have a look there. Um, and um, for the ones who are interested to really deep dive into this technology. So I'll start off with a short introduction to Lightweight M2M, as well as an introduction to NJ and Coyote, uh, which is the products from AV System that we, um, that we provide. Um, then I'll hand over the uh, mic to Carol for a demo, and then we end with some Q&A. So starting with Lightweight M2M. So Lightweight M2M is an application layer IoT standard that's really designed to simplify and accelerate IoT development. And I'll just give you a few highlights of this standard, um, a few of the key components here. And well, first of all, let's look at the 
architecture, which is actually rather simple. It it's mostly contains of two elements, which is the client that runs on the end device and the server, which runs on the cloud. And you have different implementations uh, available. Some of them are open source, some of them are proprietary. Um, and so there's, there's actually quite a lot of options to choose from. And there's an optional third component, which is called the bootstrap server. And this component um, is kind of an independent third-party server that does the key derivation. And it's, I don't know, it can be used to um, I don't know, increase the security of your application because it's quite easy to relate to rotate keys. And it also enables you to switch light with M2M um, vendors easily. So if you have more questions about these kind of subjects, feel free to drop them in a the chat and we'll cover them at the end of the presentation. So if you look at the underlying protocols underneath Lightweight M2M, then we can see that it runs on top of the protocol called Co-op or Constraint Application Protocol. And Co-op is quite similar to HTTP um, or let's say the REST API, but designed for IoT devices. And that means that it comes with standardized commands that can be sent from the server or the client. And I know that if you're a web developer, are very familiar with kind of the current way of working. So you have, I know, read, write, execute, put, and those kind of commands to, um, to basically manage the devices or to send data to the cloud. And if you go one step Deeper than Co-op runs on either UDP or TCP, but by default it runs on UDP because I know we see that that's quite often the preferred um, protocol of choice because it's lightweight, um, has a very small header size, and doesn't require the handshake that TCP requires. Um, but in case you do need more reliability, then you can also use the TCP protocol um, under this lightweight M2M layer. So if we look at the firmware of IoT devices, then we can basically say that I know, firmware is built up from different building blocks or different sets of features, which could be I know, a feature to read a temperature sensor and report the data. It can also be to um, I know, define the security credentials to properly encrypt and decrypt data. Another building block could be, I don't know, let's say a GPS sensor that obtains location data. Um, and all of these different building blocks when talking or when using the lightweight M2M standards, we call objects or smart objects. And the beauty is that um, there is a public repository called the object and resource registry that contains an overview of you now thousands of standardized objects. And the nice thing about this is that kind of the way of implementing those, this, those specific sets of features are all standardized. And that makes it relatively easy to implement it, but it also makes it quite easy to, um, for, let's say, for servers to read and process data sent by those devices because I know all of the um, objects are standardized. And if you go one level deeper, then um, we can um, break down those specific objects. And let's say we are using a temperature. We have a temperature object. Well, you could have devices that have multiple temperature sensors implemented. And you can make a distinction between those different temperature sensors by creating different object instances. Um, and then if we go one level deeper, then we can find, we can define a set of resources. And maybe this is best explained by um, looking at the object location. Um, so if you would implement location, then that comes with the resources, longitude, latitude, and altitude, among others. And um, if we then combine the object, object instance, and resource, then we can create, let's say, a common language that both the client and the server can understand. And I'm trying to explain this here with this visual. And 
Um, so with those object object instances and resources in mind, we can create this interoperable data format. So let's say we are sending um, longitude data. Then before we send that actual data, we are preceding that sensor data with a so-called URI that contains the identifiers of those objects, object instances and resources. And in practice, that would be um, object ID six refers to location. And then we follow with the object instances. Well, if there's only one um, device or one peripheral available, then that is by default a zero. And then by I know, choosing the zero as the resource, we can indicate that data that we're sending contains longitudes. So hopefully this is a bit clear, but um, I think it will start making more sense once we enter the demo. The final thing I want to explain are lightweight M2M operations. And there are, let's say, standardized commands that can be initiated from the server or the client to report data or to manage devices. So from the server side, there are a set of commands that you can send to the to one or multiple devices. And um, again, you can I don't know, maybe somewhat create the comparison with, with I don't know, standard uh, REST APIs. So for example, it can send a read command asking the client to report the latest sensor data of one specific object or one specific resource. It can also send a write operation, for example, to I don't know, change the color of an LED, for example. You can execute something, for example, a factory reset or a reboot or a firmware update. And or there, there are a few other options available, but I think you more or less get the point here. And also from the client side, you can send the operations. Well, the, the most obvious one is the send operation, which is basically um, sending a message to the server without an explicit request from the server. So well, no, you can have a time-based trigger or a, a, a value-based trigger implemented on the client. But a cool feature of this lightweight M2M standard is that you can also observe specific objects or resources. And that means that from the server side, you can instruct the devices on how to behave. And you can do so by saying um, from the server, I want to get the temperature data um, every 10 minutes, or I want to get a notification when the temperature hits 30 degrees or some kind of specific value that you set up. And I think Carol's going to show also how this works in the Coyote platform. But hopefully this, this starts making a little bit sense from the theoretical perspective. Then AV System has two core products that we are using to build lightweight M2M applications. And the first one is the NJ SDK, which is basically the implementation of a lightweight M2M client. And um, that, um, so the NJ SDK is um, open source, or actually I should say open core. So almost everything is, is open source and fully available on our GitHub. There are some proprietary features that might come in handy if you and I use the standards at a really high scale. So it's mostly open source. It's an implementation of the lightweight M2M client according to the specifications. Um, and it takes care of all the, you know, let's say, complicated parts of the protocol. So in fact, you don't have to worry about um, the right formatting of your data. Um, also, the SDK um, includes all the proper responses when these specific commands are being issued. And we have several implementations. So Zephyr, FreeRTOS, STM32, as well as Espressive, as you will see today. And then we have the Coyote IoT device management platform, and that's the cloud components or the lightweight end-to-end server that um, no, is developed and maintained by AV System. And not only does this contain all the basic functionalities of the lightweight M2M specifications, but it also has some cool additional features like data integrations to cloud platforms like Azure or AWS, um, or some kind of 
um, alert system that detects anomalies. So if you want to learn more about this, then we're happy to um, talk about it more in detail later on this presentation. Um, because this far, I want to stop here um, and invite Carol to take over. Uh, yes, so hello again. So disabling my screen. So Carol, feel free to take over. And hopefully this was clear this far. If not, drop a message in the chat. And also throughout the presentation from Carol, if there's anything that goes too fast or maybe goes on, uh, maybe it's too technical, then feel free to drop a message and uh, we'll elaborate later on. OK. Uh, so uh, now uh, I will present uh, today's demo. And it's a development process. Uh, so this is what it looks like uh, on a on a PCB. And uh, the idea behind it uh, was to create a simple device uh, scattered around uh, the conference rooms in our company uh, for measuring uh, crucial air parameters such as temperature, humidity, and CO2 concentration. Uh, and then these uh, measurements are sent uh, to a server. Uh, for which uh, they can be uh, read remotely uh, and uh, their changes uh, during the day can be uh, visualized on, uh, on some charts. Okay. So uh, to achieve this, uh, I use uh, our uh, integration with ASP42 uh, as the base of our project. Uh, it can be found, find, it, it can be found on uh, AV system GitHub, so anyone can uh, download it. Mm. And uh, after cloning this uh, this repository, uh, I add uh, required uh, drivers for uh, sensors uh, and uh, and the display. Uh, and after that, uh, I add I added uh, these uh, blocks described by uh, uh, Lawrence uh, called uh, objects. And uh, these objects uh, contain resources that I, that I use to rep represent uh, uh, our measurements. And uh, as a server, I choose uh, Coyote. With a developer account, we can uh, connect up to 10 devices uh, uh, free of uh, charge. And uh, we can easily uh, uh, visualize uh, how the parameter change uh, during the day without uh, the need for any additional uh, services. And yes, so here we have uh, the object list. Uh, in this project. And uh, the base engine integration with ASP42 uh, comes with these uh, five, uh, these five uh, first objects uh, already implemented. So thank, thanks to this, uh, all I uh, had to do to make it work as an uh, air monitoring uh, device uh, was to uh, add these three additional, <clears throat> uh, three additional uh, objects. Uh, and uh, this uh, brings us to the topic of uh, adding uh, new objects. Uh, so uh, uh, to represent uh, temperature and humidity, uh, I used uh, IPSO object, uh, uh, objects uh, which uh, are defined by uh, IPSO alliance. Uh, and uh, there are many other IPSO objects. And uh, most of them represent uh, similar things, such as uh, measurements. Uh, or sensors, and uh, th that's why they have uh, compatible resources. And because of this, uh, we were able to create separate, easy to use uh, API uh, for these objects in Anjai. And in case of uh, this integration with ASP32, to add new IPSA objects, all, all uh, we need to do is to add new element to this array. So, uh, so uh, as you can see on this uh, code snippet, uh, or snippet on the right, uh, on the right. Uh, so we need to specify the name of our sensor, the units, uh, object ID, and you also need to uh, uh, provide uh, handlers uh, for uh, for reading uh, for reading and getting data. 
And uh, the case of uh, air quality uh, was a little bit, a little bit harder uh, because uh, it, it is not an uh, IPS object. Uh, so I, I had to add a whole file, uh, source file for, for this uh, object uh, with a structure that uh, represents full object and uh, structures for uh, for each instance, uh, there are also more handlers to implement, uh, to implement, as shown uh, uh, in the code snippet on the right. Uh, but uh, to make this process easier, uh, there is a script bundle with Anjoy uh, for uh, generating uh, generating stuff for uh, new objects. Uh, and uh, without going into details, we may simply call a single command that uh, generate a new source file with out of to dos. Uh, and then we just need to replace them with actual code. Uh, okay, so there is a list of uh, hardware component components used uh, in uh, this this project. Uh, so uh, so that's our sensors, uh, OLED display, and also step up converter uh, DC to DC. Okay. So now I think uh, we can move on uh, to adding a new device to the Coyote server. So uh, let's go to the uh, Coyote uh, uh, web page. And uh, in uh, device inventory tab, uh, let's click on add device button. Then uh, select uh, via the management server tile. And here, uh, provide an uh, endpoint name for uh, our device. Let's say HP32 uh, CO2 uh, um, uh, 001, for example. Uh, OK. And as uh, security mode, we will use a pre shared key. And also, we need to provide a key itself. Oh, sorry. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Select something simple, uh, and okay. So now we can switch to uh, to our project to ID with uh, our project, and in and uh, in this integration uh, we have a separate partition called uh, NVS partition, uh, and in this partition we can store uh, some credential related to Wi-Fi and uh, lightweight M two M server. So let uh, just uh, provide uh, these credentials. So in my case, with SSID and password, it looks like this. And now just copy endpoint name. Identity is uh, same as endpoint name. Also, we need a PSK. And uh, we also need to. Uh, need to provide a URL to our server. So here it is. OK. Uh, so uh, now we can, uh, we, can get, uh, we, we need to generate uh, a binary file. That, so just uh, execute one command. And now we can uh, flash our, uh, our, uh, this partition of our device with ASP tool. Great. Uh, OK, so now uh, our device uh, reboot, rebooted. And, uh, it will, uh, and uh, in, in, in the moment, we should uh, see a Wi-Fi icon. And there it is. So we have connection with uh, Wi-Fi. And next, we should see uh, AV system uh, icon. And we also see it here. So we have connection to a server. Okay, so we next uh, now can go to uh, our uh, our uh, new device, and it can take some time uh, for a server to uh, discover all of these uh, new uh, objects and full data model of our device. So let's wait a moment. OK, and so now we, we can see uh, our uh, objects. So temperature, humidity, and air quality. 
uh, we can uh, read our objects, uh, our uh, resources that uh, contain uh, uh, measurements from our sensors. Okay. Uh, and now, uh, if we would like to uh, create a graph showing the, how uh, these parameters change uh, over the time, uh, we uh, need to uh, set uh, execute operation. Uh, uh, we need to uh, execute uh, observe uh, operation uh, as Lawrence said. So. Let's say uh, let's say that we would like to get information from device, uh, get update from a device uh, with uh, uh, with every uh, 10, ten seconds. And we also need to uh, click on this uh, add widget icon to uh, to add a new widget to uh, to a dashboard. So yes, now we can uh, move on to dashboard tab. And as you can see, uh, here we have uh, our uh, charts uh, with uh, our uh, CO2 concentration from our from uh, our device. Yes, so this is how it looks like. And I think that's all that I will uh, that I want to uh, present. So now we can uh, move on to uh, Q&A section. I think. All right, Bye. amazing! Thank you so much, Carol. Um, let's get the full view on board again. So uh, thank you so much for the demo. It was really uh, short and, uh, and, and concise. So thanks for that. I can imagine there are some questions about the actual code and how to um, I don't know, st start from there. But um, let's first uh, cover some questions that I saw popping up. And uh, thanks so much for already answering some of them in the chat. Um, but let's start there and maybe then we can I don't know, spend a, a, maybe a few minutes to dive a little bit deeper in the application code for the ones that would find this interesting. Um, so I saw a few questions about, I don't know, mostly about security configuration. So you use pre-shared key indeed, um, and that is indeed, um, I don't know, keys need to be configured on both the client as well as on the server um but maybe carol you can help me explain because they're def they're different security implementations uh, that you can mm -hmm. choose from correct uh yes so this uh, integration also uh, supports uh, certificates uh so uh, yes uh, we can uh, just flash uh, these certificates on uh, our device and uh, and it should uh, work uh, on a uh, coyote. Perfect. Great. So um, JP ask, okay, could you describe the expected flow to onboard a large number of devices, say thousands onto coyote? It will be tricky to create them one by one and then compiling and flashing the credentials. Um, partition for each one. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Is this something so, you can answer, Carol? Uh, so from a uh, coyote, uh, I'm not sure uh, how to uh, uh, how to how it should like to uh, to add so, some so much uh, devices, but. Uh, on uh, Android, we can uh, create a uh, special script that can upload uh, needed uh, credentials on a, on, a, on a board, so it could uh, it can be done in factory or. All right. Um, so JP, if you want to learn more, we can send you some more information. Um, so from the Coyote side, there's a feature to import devices from a CSV file. Um, and I know we can also go one step further. So there are also APIs um, behind the Coyote 
dashboard. So and you can also create your own scripts um, and in, in such a way import devices in bulk. Uh, hopefully that answers the question. Um, Megan, where can we get the codes? Yes, I like this uh, question. Carol. <laughs> okay, so uh, so this uh, b basic integration with ASP32, uh, you can find on uh, GitHub, uh, on uh, AB System GitHub. Uh, and uh, the code with these three additional uh, objects you can find uh, on my GitHub account. So I think I can just provide a link uh, on the chat. Perfect. And maybe we can also share directly the link to our GitHub. Um, because okay. basically there's a standard implementation that already comes with some objects enabled. Um, if you remember it from Carol's slide. So basically the, I know, the tu tutorial on Hexter um, I know, supports you in creating those additional objects. So you can really go into um, and I'll dive in the application code and start um, using the API to add those uh, specific objects. Um. Okay, so I sent uh, two uh, links to uh, GitHub. Perfect. And let me add the third one um, to the specific Hexter story that I know, is a full tutorial on how to recreate this project, which is quite fun to do. I I should say. Um, let's see. I see some other questions popping up. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Amkar, I'm not sure if I'm able to answer that. Maybe you, Carol. So, could we have the same system implemented over six Lopan? Mm. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Uh, I tried to find this question. Uh, just uh, the one before the link you sent. Oh, okay. Uh, frankly speaking, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't. I don't know if uh, ASP32 su supports uh, this uh, radio frequency. Yeah. So uh, we need to get back to you on that question. Um, to be fair. So Stefan, question is lightweight and to him suited to interact with clients that go online rarely. Let's say only every two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. So for uh, this type of uh, device, we uh, have uh, Q mode uh, in Anjai. So uh, then uh, our device just sends uh, all a uh, package uh, in, in once uh, when it, uh, uh, when it, uh, uh, Mm, when it uh, go from uh, standby uh, state standby uh, status, so I think that it is a good idea to use uh, this uh, Q mod in Android for a device like this. Yeah. So the answer is yes. Uh, there are some implementations developed for that. Um, so, uh, um, we can send you some further information, Stefan, if, if interested, uh, because for sure this, I know the protocol is designed for resource constrained devices and of those devices, I know in that, that included devices, which are basically in deep sleep most of the time. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of core of the, uh, standards. Um, okay. So we already hit the. 30 minutes and I know the goal was to keep it short and informal. So I think we managed to do that. Um, so all of the source code can be found with the links and that we sent in the chat. And we also be sending you a follow-up email 
um, with additional links. Um, maybe the final thing that I want to say is we also have a Discord um, and that's the fastest way to get support. And of course, you can always drop us a message. Um, uh, but I don't know, the, the fastest way to get any support for Coyote or for anything lightweight M2M related, um, you can, um, which can be found on our Discord. So let me see if we can quickly find the link and also share that in the chat. And I'll be also forwarding that in the, um, in the email. Um, I can't find the link right now, so I'll make sure that's um, taken care of shortly. So thank you so much for, for listening. Any final last words, Carol, you want to share with the audience? So thank you for coming. It was a pleasure to demonstrate uh, our demo. Great. And um, yeah, so I know, hopefully this provides a short introduction, but I know, we, we mostly want to invite you all to try it out yourself. So um, I can imagine many of you might have a, a ESP32 lying around, but we also have implementations for Raspberry Pi, either the, the Pico or just the, uh, the main Raspberry Pi board. Or I know you, you might have something lying around here, so I would say just give it a try. You can set up um, it, like the setup is quite easy, and to get started, everything is for free. So um, um, yeah, I invite you all to try it out yourself. So thank you so much for listening, and uh, we hope to see you again next time. Thank Bye -bye. you.